Okay, so I'm in Storyline, and the first thing I want to do is insert a couple buttons here to use as our audio on and audio off buttons. So I'm just going to type on for this first one, and let's give it a green color because it's on, and then insert one more. And let's make this off, and then we'll make this a red button. Now, because these are radio buttons, they're automatically going to toggle. Uh, if I right click any one of them or both of them, I'll see that they are already assigned to a button set. So that's pretty cool. And let me just show you what that means by that. This means by default, only one of those two buttons is going to be selected, right? So as I click each of those, the programming is already taken care of for us because they are a button set, which is the expected behavior for the round or uh, radio buttons. All right, cool. So now that I have that set up, the next step is to add a variable. I need a variable to track my choice on this slide and then carry that choice across all of these other slides, the slides with the narration. So let's go over right here into our variables in the manage project variables, bring this window open, and I could actually work with any of the three types of variables in this example. I could work with the number, the text, or the true false. However, the true false just seems to fit this type of example better. Do you want our audio narration true? Do you want it false? That just seems to uh, make it a little bit easier to kind of read and say. So we'll call this audio narration. And we will choose a true false. And let's make the default value false. Let's assume that most people, most learners are not going to want the narration, right? So if most people were going to want it, then if you thought that was, if you expected most people, most learners to want the audio narration, then you could set it to true. But uh, let's just use false by default. Okay, click OK and click OK. Now, next step I want to do is just assign a trigger to each of these buttons to change the value of that variable. So we add a new trigger, and the trigger here is adjust the variable. The variable is the variable we just created, audio narration, equals to, so assignment is just an equals, so equal to a value of true when user clicks radio button 1, which is the on button. Click OK. And let's do the same thing for the other button. So adjust the variable equal to false when user clicks radio button 2. And I'll click OK. Now to test this, to verify that this is working, we need a, or we really should use a variable reference, which is just a way to display the value of that variable. And it works like this. So you go up to the Insert tab, grab a text box, and just click once on your slide just to set that active text box, right? You don't want to click again because you'll lose that. Go back to the Insert tab and choose Reference. And Reference just means insert a reference or display what that a certain variable is. So here's the variable we have. We only have one, right? We have the audio narration. If I click OK, it just places that variable name in between two percent signs. And the percent signs are just telling us, or telling Storyline, that, hey, display the value of that variable when it is uh, updated, or if it updates, or whatever the current value is, right? It'll update as we click each of these buttons if everything is working uh, as intended. So click Preview the slide. All right, and if I click the, by default, you see it's set, set to uh, false, but if I click on, there it changes to true. If I click off, it goes to true, off it goes to false. So that's really cool. This is working as we like, because now when I move forward in the course, whatever I set this value to, we can uh, use that to make any other customized changes on the other slides. So if we set the audio to true, then we'll add that and carry that variable forward through the other slides. Okay, let's do that right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this reference, and I'll just paste it over here because it'll help us verify that everything on this slide is working correctly as well. Now you'll notice down here that we have the audio icon, which means we've already inserted the audio for us. And so we want to play this only if, right, the variable audio narration is true. So let's add a trigger here on the slide that says play media down here in the middle, play media. And there's only one media here on the, on the slide, audio one. When the timeline starts, so as soon as the slide loads, I want you to start playing it if a condition is being met. The condition is that the variable of audio narration is equal to true. All right, and click OK, and one more time.
Now, you'll notice that the audio waveform now is become an icon. So it's not going to play until it's triggered to. And the trigger that tells it to play is if that audio narration variable is equal to true, right? That's what we just set up in the previous slide. If this audio narration is equal to true, then go ahead and play. So let's test the scene and see if that first slide works. It makes sense to test this first scene, uh, be, the first couple slides before we add um, uh, everything, all the triggers to the other slides. So test the scene. And let's just leave it at default for now. So we'll say false, but I should choose that anyway, but we could, you know what, let's do this. Just realize that. So on this first slide, because we're setting the default value to false, let's choose the initial state for the object for the off button and set that to selected. So it just looks like it's already selected. There's no reason for the learner to have to go in there and click one. So now let's preview the scene again. All right, so it's off, so we'll leave it off. I go to the next slide. It's false, and there's no narration playing. Let's try it one more time, preview the scene. And this time we'll choose true or on, click next. All right, cool. There is the audio narration. Everything works really great. That's what we wanted. And now we could come in here and then copy this trigger. Just right click, copy it. Go to the next slide, paste it, and we just need to select it right here from the audio. So that's a really easy way for learners to be able to choose whether or not they want to play course narration, uh, maybe show a closed caption, uh, some other type of note that you want to give them a choice of how they want to show it uh, when the course begins. Or you could even include it as a tab or as a lightbox slide so that at any point the learners could jump back in and then select, you know, make their choices if they wanted to make an update to uh, something they chose at the beginning of the course.